There's lots more to a building layout than walls, doors, and windows. So let's start by adding a few other components to this model. We'll start with some columns and then we'll look at a variety of other components. Now, what all of these items have in common is Revit refers to these as families and families are organized into different categories. Sometimes those categories will have their own dedicated button, such as walls, doors, windows, and columns. And other times you're gonna find everything just under the generic component button. So let's start with columns. There are actually two types structural and architectural. And for this example, I'm gonna do the architectural column. And when I choose that command off the list, over here on the type selector, you will see that there's a single rectangular column family loaded, and it has three sizes. I'm gonna accept the default 24 inch square size. Now, an interesting behavior of columns is that they will automatically sense where the grid lines are, and you can select that intersection. And if I click and just zoom in a little bit there, Notice that it will merge right into the surrounding wall geometry, which is a pretty nice behavior. Now, if you happen to place the column in intersection that does not touch any walls, then of course it will not merge into anything. Now, out here in the dining room, it might be nice to have something a little bit more decorative. So in this case, because I only have the one rectangular column loaded, I'll need to come over here and use the load family button. Now, anytime you need a family that's not already part of your project, you can simply load that family in from an external folder structure. Now, I'm in my default library structure here, and there is a columns subfolder. And within that subfolder, I have several columns to choose from. I'm going to choose this metal clad column here, which is a little bit more decorative. If you don't have access to the same folder structure as me, I've provided a copy of this with the exercise files. You can load it from there. So I'll open this column and then I'll place one maybe right here and right here. And then I'll click the modify tool to cancel. So those are some columns, but what about other kinds of families that we can place? So let me pan down to the toilet room here up near the top of the plan. And let's go to the component tool next. For things like sinks and toilet fixtures and furniture and lighting, we don't have dedicated buttons. So instead, what we're gonna see here is that all of those various items are available under this single component tool. So what I'm gonna do is scroll through this list here and locate this sink symbol here to start with. Now, this is a kitchen sink and I'll start with that and later I can always swap it out with something more appropriate. But for the time being, I'm more interested in just having a symbol to represent that I need a sink here. So let me zoom in just a little bit closer and notice that the orientation of this sink is kind of pointing up. If you tap your space bar, you can change that orientation by rotating it 90 degree increments. So I'm gonna tap the space bar so that it's rotated to the left, and then I'll just kind of click nearby the location where I want it to go, and I'll place a second one in the other toilet room right here. I'll open up the type selector and switch to a toilet symbol next. Now this one's gonna behave a little bit differently because it's a wall hosted component. So just like doors and windows, it requires a wall host, which means that I can't place it in empty space. However, if I highlight a wall, then it will appear. And so I'll place one right here and I'll place another one right here. Now you'll notice that temporary dimensions do appear. So if you need to adjust the position of any of those elements, you can easily do that in a similar fashion to how we've moved other elements. Let me zoom back out and focus now on the main dining room area. And I'd like to add some dining chairs and tables here. So I'll go back to my component tool. And another thing that you can do with the type selector dropdown is search. So I'm gonna search for the word table, but notice that it comes up with no matches. So that means I need to go to load family in order to find some tables to place. So I'll click load family and it remembers the previous folder that I was in. I'll go up one step and find my furniture folder. And then I'll double click that. And then inside of there, there's a tables folder. And here there are several tables to choose from. And one thing that you can do is sort of select the first item and then just use the down arrow on the keyboard and kind of quickly page through them all to see a preview. Now, I like this one right here, this round dining table with chairs, but I also want this rectangular table right here. 
If you hold your control key down, you can select more than one and load both families at the same time. Now, when I do that, it puts the rectangular table on my cursor and I'm gonna place some booth seating over here on the left. So I'll just sort of place one of those tables right there. Now I'll open up the type selector and notice that the round table with chairs is also available on the list. So let's start with the small size, 36 inch diameter, and I'll place one right here. And then I'll switch immediately to the middle size and place another one right here. And I'll click my modify tool to cancel. Now I usually like to place one of each and then just use the copy command. I find that a little bit easier, but you can certainly place them directly if you prefer. So I'll select the table that I wanna copy, then go to the copy tool right here. And if you wanna create more than one copy, there's a multiple option on the options bar. So simply check this box and this means that you can pick the base point once and then place a copy and another and another. Now I'm placing those randomly, but you can also move your mouse in the direction that you wanna copy and type in a number and then it will place that new copy at that exact distance away. So if you wanna be a little bit more precise, it's pretty easy to do. Now here, I wanna focus on the booth seating and I need a booth. Now, it turns out that if I go to the component tool and load family, there isn't any booths available in the default library. So sometimes the family you're looking for won't be available. Well, your choices are you can go out to the internet and try and find a site that's devoted to Revit content and find the item you're looking for, or you could build it yourself. Now that's what I've done in this case. So I'm gonna go to my exercise files folder and bring in this family that I've created called booth seating. So if I select that and click open and then look at the type selector, it has a few different sizes. So I'm gonna choose the 72 inch long size so that it matches the size of the corresponding table. I'll go ahead and place that booth, click the modify tool to cancel. Now I'm gonna select that booth that I just placed and I want another booth on the other side of the table. Up here on the Modify tab is a Mirror Pick Axis tool. And what this lets me do is use the center line of the other family as the mirror line. So most families will have a center line and this one has one in both directions. So I'm gonna choose the long center line here and that mirrors the booth over to the other side and then I'll click anywhere to deselect. Now I could select all three elements and copy those to continue creating my layout. Now, the fastest way to select all three is to use a box selection. So I'll click anywhere in empty space, hold down my mouse, start to drag. If you drag to the left, you get a dashed box. To the right, you get a solid box. So make sure you're getting a dashed box and you just wanna skim through those three items. And over here, it will say furniture three. So you've now selected three furniture items, go to copy, I'll pick a start point at the end point and a new point right there. And I'm still in multiple copy, so I could create as many copies as I like. At this point, I've created several items and it might be nice to see how things are shaping up in another view, such as a 3D view. So I'll come up here to the quick access toolbar, click my default 3D view icon, roll my wheel to zoom in, hold down my wheel and drag to begin orbiting around. There's my booth seating there. There's my decorative column. And if I continue spinning around and drag this way, there are all my other tables and chairs. So creating additional items of other categories just involves picking either their own dedicated tool or using the component tool and placing those elements. If the element you want is not already preloaded, you can use load family to load it into your project. If you wanna learn more about any of these categories or items, you can check out Revit Essential Training. And if you wanna learn more about creating custom families, we have a few courses here in the library. You're welcome to check out any of those to learn more.